Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Handy Mandy TV, and this week we're going to be doing an art vase encrusted in Epsom salt. So first thing you're going to need are some inspirational images. I'm looking for some inspiration from Northern Lights, the Aurora Borealis, the shapes, the colors of the actual Northern Lights, as well as the background. And I'm using an old sock as a rag. This is optional because there's a couple different methods I'm going to show you. This is a window marker from the dollar store and they come in the different colors, blue, pink, I think there's yellow and white as well. I'm using Laurentian pencil crayons for my color references and I'm not matching to the actual lead it's, or whatever color itself but the actual outside casing. These are some paint brushes that I'm using. I like the synthetic they're really, really nice and soft, and there's a five set that comes with the one I'm holding and a grip on the handle, and it's really nice for like a doll or something. So you're going to need some saran wrap, because what you're going to do is you're going to cover your paint palette, because I painted for hours, and what happens with acrylic paints is over time they will harden and crust up. So after I finish painting, I always cover it, and that way I don't have to remix from scratch all my colors I'm going to be using. I'm also got a towel underneath there for when I have to dry my brushes after I rinse them. So I got some water and a little cup on a little coaster. I have some newspaper laid down underneath. Oh look, there's some snacks. So I have some newspaper laid down underneath. I'm using some tubes of acrylic paint. I used a lot of white with this project. I'm still using Peacock Blue and African Violet, mixing them equally to get the blueberry color that I love. I use a smidgen of Christmas red, which of course is only the pink on the bottom. Um, I also use from my acrylic paint set the Viridian, which is a really nice kind of aqua turquoise green. And I use Flesh to make my paint kind of peachy. So those are the two colors I use. Um, I try to use the tubes, but then the paint that comes right there is already pre-mixed so it makes it really easy. I use an L square to help me um, quarantine off the little sections to know where to start doing the different colors to make a gradient. Oh look there's some more snacks. So I use an L square you can also use like a big ruler. Mine happens to be really long. So you're going to need some Epsom salt aka bath salt. I'm also using a set of rubber gloves. You can make sure to check for the sizes when you go to the dollar store for that. Cryolon clear glaze that came out to about ten dollars at Canadian Tire. Hopefully, if you go to Walmart, it'll be cheaper. Elmer spray adhesive is about six or seven, and you're gonna need a vase. And this is the Christmas one I did, which I'm redoing now with colors. So I'm gonna be wiping this off. I'm using some glass cleaner. I'm going down the long way on the outside, and I'm going around in a circle on the inside. So then, if you have any streaks, you can tell where you have to wipe it down a little bit more. Um, I'm wearing the gloves without my fingerprints and the dirt and the oil on my hands don't make fingerprints on the glass because that kind of is counterproductive. So here's some different methods. And before I forget, as you can see in that little container to the right, there's some painter's tape and different widths. So the different methods that you can do, um, it has to do with what kind of effect you want. If you have a vase where you want to put something in it, and you want like little holes popping out like that small vase, the Christmas vase I showed you, um, you will need to do one or two layers and I used the painter's tape and I cut some in half so that there were na more narrow strips so that I could create these cutouts and then whatever decorative items I put on the inside that you could see. So the method I used was I took that marker and I sketched out all the northern lights as they're going up the vase and then I painstakingly used the, um, the rag sock to rub off portions and then paint them right away, as you can see right here. Now, if I were to redo this, I would think that it might be a little easier to just do the whole background, the gradient from the top to the bottom, do two coats because that's extra thick. And then um, do the northern lights over top. And that way I don't have to painstakingly take all these little lines away and then paint and replace it. It was just really, really tedious and it took a long time. Um, now, 
as you can see, one layer, you can see through it. So if you have a small vase and you want to see the light through it, but you're doing, you're not having any cutouts, that would be really well. And if you like the paint streaks that you can see uh, through the Epsom salt, if you look at that Christmas vase, it was really, really nice the way it showed. It kind of was like snow, wind kind of texture with the, but the only thing is when you're painting, like this big vase that I'm painting right now, um, they're not super long streaks, so the edges of where I'm painting kind of overlap and it's not quite as effective. So, uh, I would say that doing two layers on super large vases is a lot better and just have cutouts. Otherwise, I would suggest doing a full solid. And of course, when you're doing like curvy kind of, um images like this it's kind of hard to take the painters tape and qu like quarantine off those both sections so you can have really nice fine lines so what ends up happening is I do one layer in my northern lights which is the mint green and then I do my ombre or gradient from top to bottom and then I do a second layer of the gradient and then I go back and I do a second layer of the mint green so that way I can go and over any sections because when I was doing my gradient I might have made those original northern light sections smaller because I was accidentally painting over top of it because I'm a perfectionist and I try to make it as smooth as possible so it doesn't look you know cruddy so I'm using my L square as I paint my gradient so that um, it's kind of like sectioning off little bars like if you were to do like the whole background it'd be like a ring all the way around and just doing multiple rings all the way up for each different color as you're going from one color to the next or lighter to darker whatever you're doing um so i used my laurentian blueberry pencil crayon and i marked on the bottom towards me and i wrote down like how many inches between each section and where they stopped and started so I went from like three quarter inch to one inch to three inch to five, seven, eleven, sixteen and a half, or whatever. So um, now I can lay it on its side, as you can see me doing right now, which is really easy. And I can, because it's such a long vase, I can go from doing the bottom and then completely turn it around a full 180 degree and then do from the middle towards myself and do the upper half. So this is what the gradient looks like and of course I'm going to be adding more colors in between them because sometimes they're a little harsh and they don't blend that well. And mixing paint can take just as long as painstakingly painting all those individual lines. So you can almost notice like the different sections. And this is what it looks like when it's completely finished painting and it's all blended. There's two coats now and I made sure to go over all the lines and my northern lights now have some white highlighting so it gives them more depth instead of just being big blobs of green. So now I'm taking my spray adhesive and I'm going over the bottom half first then the top. I have both gloves on. One glove is holding it from the inside of the vase and the other one is picking up the salt and dropping it on to the vase so that way it's not just I make sure to go like heavy on all the areas so that way it's evenly dispersed. And if you miss any spots, you just spray that spot and just pour on some more Epsom salt. The thing too is when you're spraying it on, not all the Epsom salt is going to stick. So when you're finished, tap it all around or just tap the top or whatever to get it to or use. Because when you were, when I was taking my glove and I was trying to rub the side, it would start rubbing off the Epsom salt that I didn't want it to so I would prefer just tapping it and now I'm cleaning my arrow anything any of the Epsom salt that's actually in the newspaper and it's not sticking to the paper you can save and just put it right back in the bag and then I would suggest throwing away that newspaper and laying down a new set and anything that ends up on the ground don't put it back in the bag just throw it out because it's going to be mixing with dirt and you don't want that for your next project or your, you know, bath. So I'm, now I'm taking my clear glaze and I'm putting on a thick coat because what I noticed with my first one, or even with my glitter projects, that the Epsom salt and the glitter would start falling off. So here is the final product. 
I hope that you guys like it. And if you guys have are going to do your own project, I would love to see what you're doing. So you want a video reply. If you have any requests or questions or anything, I'd love to hear from you guys. I hope you have a great week. And I'll see you next time.